Hi guys, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Today I made a layout using prints that I took from my jelly plate, or well, what, well, one print that I took from my jelly plate. I made a whole bunch of backgrounds and you'll get to see part of that process at the beginning of this video. And then with one of those backgrounds, I used a whole bunch of my scraps from my scrap drawers and created a layout of a photo of my new passion, which is tea. <laughs> I'm a coffee drinker, so it's unusual for me to be drinking tea. Now, I have these black templates that I made up uh, for masking off different parts of a 12 by 12 piece of paper in order to make backgrounds. So I'm coming in on this video halfway through the jelly printing process. I spent about half an hour making uh, prints with my jelly plate. And I do have a couple of other videos on my ch on my channel where I uh, took prints from a jelly plate, so you can check those out if you're interested in seeing the full process. Uh, it, I took a bunch of prints with the green and yellow and white paint, and then I just put a layer of the red paint, and now I'm pulling. Uh, print through this stencil so that I've got these red dots on top of the yellow and green. Um, print that was already there. And now I'm just uh, taking the paint that was left on that stencil and putting it in my art journal. And now I'm masking off another circle and pulling another print that gives me a nice circular shaped uh, print as well. And now I, I found that the that the red was a little bit too much. So I put a bunch of white paint on and I'm going to pull some more prints of of some white on I'm going to basically put a, a white layer on top of some of the some of the red just to kind of tone it down a little bit. I took just a piece of pa plastic packaging from a, a box of chocolates just to get some random dots all over the jelly plate to, to kind of get a bit of a pattern in it. And then that gave me a nice uh, white way of toning down uh, some of the bright red that was already on there. And now I'm using my jelly plate as an ink pad. I'm rolling out some red paint onto my jelly plate. And then I'm going to pick up some paint with this art foamy from Julie Fay Fan Balzer. It's called the Writer's Block. It's just a bunch of random text. And I really, really love it. It's one of my favorite foam stamps that I own. And so I'm making a, just an overlapped layered design in the center of that one piece of, uh, of, of paper that I, that I pulled from my, from previous prints today. And uh, now I'm going to stamp again. I just put the mask back in place so that I could stamp off of the page and have it uh, not extend into the white edge. I just basically want the mixed media to be within the circular center of this piece of, of cardstock. I'm using American Crafts cardstock for all of this. I have about, I think I have about five sheets on the go here. And I'm just layering print after print after print on top of those. I'm pulling off a little bit more of the red paint by using that that um, that bubble wrap and I'm masking off another circle and taking I guess I, I didn't really want a rough edge so I just I just uh, pressed in the center so that I wouldn't get that exact edge of the circle and now I'm just braring off my roller onto my uh, various pages of my art journal so that I don't waste the paint I'm pulling a couple of prints uh, onto a piece of deli paper just to get some of the paint off of the plate. And now I'm using a baby wipe to clean this plate off, at least the center part. I'm going to just leave the, the edges on because uh, most of the prints that I'm pulling are from the center. My plate here is a 12 by 14 inch jelly plate. And so um, and, and, and so it's bigger than a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Here I am going again with the green and white and uh, yellow paint and I'm braring it smooth and then I'm going to place this arrow stencil. This is a stencil girl stencil and I'm going to place that onto the paint on the jelly plate. I'm putting my my 11 and a half by 11 and a half template on top of it and then I just masked it further with a piece of uh, deli paper and that just puts a very very subtle arrow print over top of the uh, of, of the of the red print that was on there. 
I'm pulling off the stencil and now I'm going to pull another circular shape uh, from that leftover green and yellow and white paint. And again, just kind of trying to sop up as, much, as many layers of that paint as possible here before I put away my, my deli plate, my jelly plate. So here are those, there are those uh, templates that I masked off that I used to mask off my, my jelly plate so that I could get a nice crisp circular uh, design on my background paper. And also so that I could get a 11 and a half by 11 and a half inch design. I'm just talking here about how I have uh, created these two templates so that they could layer within or nest within one another, but I didn't do that today. So if I do that again, I'll show you that if I, if I use it that way. So here's this one. It's one of my favorites. I'm, I'm really leaning towards using this one. And that's what I'm telling you there is that I really like it. And I think I might use this one today. And I'm going to just take a moment to show you all of them. I don't know exactly what I'm saying here. This is a video that I, I um, kind of put the full video of this on my Patreon account for, for the people who are supporting me over on Patreon. And then this is just the uh, abbreviated version today. Look at the detail on that print. I just love that one. It's so awesome. Um, I just love the detail that you can get and the layering that you can get going on with a jelly with a jelly plate. So here are some of the ones that I'm not going to use today. I don't like them quite as much, and that's usually the way it goes with jelly with with the jelly plate for me. Anyways, is that I usually if I if I do five or six uh, jelly prints, then I usually end up liking maybe two or three of them. So uh, I'm really leaning towards that square one or this circular one. I also really like the other circular one, but I think I'll save it for another day. And so I'm going to keep those three options out on my desk just to kind of keep them in mind that I might use any of those as my backgrounds. But first, I want to put a little bit of gold splatter all over them just to make them look that much more interesting and give them a little bit more detail and shine. So I'm just grabbing my Tri Art palette, which is my large white palette that I use. It's a non-stick palette and it's really great for uh, messy work. I have a couple of them and you saw me using one when I was doing the, my, my jelly plate work. Uh, and this is a different one that I have. I just have a piece of silicone, um, not silicone, a piece of parchment paper and it is I used packing tape to attach it to one side of it so that I can kind of flip it up and it catches any splatter that might uh, go flying <laughs> into my workspace so I have my Liquitex gold acrylic color here and uh, gold ink it is and I'm just splattering and then I'm also just using it to tone down that little red bit in the center of that circle and now this is the circle that I love so much that I'm pretty sure I'm going to use on this page today so I just splattered a couple of uh, gold splatters and then I went over the even though I used the template to mask that off um, I still went over a little bit, a little bit of that gold ink got onto the edge. So I just wiped it up with a baby wipe while it was still a little bit wet. And I did the same, just added some splatter to this one as well. I really like the look of the edge of that uh, square one being, I like how it's white around the edges. It's really quite nice. I, I really like both of these. I can't decide which of them I'm going to use. So I'm going to put them both aside and uh, trim down my photo and just think about it. Sometimes I, I, I describe it as, you know, I have to let that idea percolate and, and come to fruition. So I'm not entirely sure which of those I'm going to use, but in the meantime, I'm going to pull out some of my supplies and start thinking about what layers are going to go under, under my photo. My cat is very persistent today. She really wants some attention. I pulled out my folder of black and white paper and at first I thought I would mat a photo, mat the photo from that folder of paper. But then I decided I think I want to just use my scraps for this entire layout. So I don't want to cut into any pattern paper, like full sheets of paper at all if I don't have to. So I grabbed my black and white scrap drawer and pulled some paper out of there instead. And you see I had several options. So I'm going to put away these two full sheets that I took out and put the whole folder back and just work with these uh, bits of black and white scraps. I also pulled out my green scrap drawer 
And I have a bunch of, you know, greens here that I think might work with the colors in the photo and the colors on the background paper. And now I have my yellow and orange drawer and I'm going to pull out, again, I'm looking for some whimsical, bright, colorful scraps. And that one has pineapples and there's pineapple in the tea that I'm scrapbooking about. So I also grabbed those pineapple puffy stickers that my sister gave me for Christmas as well. And now here finally are, are my red scraps and I'm pulling out any reds that might coordinate with the red that I already used in the paint on the mixed media background. And also there's a little bit of red in my coffee cup as well. So I went to put I'm going to start by matting this on, this is a piece of Webster's Pages uh, paper, and the paper was not cut at a 90 degree angle, so I struggled a little bit there with getting it looking like a nice mat, but there we go. And I like using the dark paper as a mat because it just, it, it kind of balances off with the white border around the edge of it, and it gives the, the edges of the photo nice definition. I thought about using this this piece of red and darker red striped paper as a as an element of kind of boldness or like a bright bit of color. I also am thinking about using this black and white strip as as a piece of bold uh something to kind of draw your attention to the layers uh, and I can't decide which of them I'm going to use so I'm leaving them both in even though I, I know I'm not going to use them both I'm just leaving them both in while I decide and then I decided to not use the red one I really like how the black and white one looks though so I'm layering the feather paper from Scraptastic and that polka dot paper is from Pink Paisley the very light polka dot paper that's on the very background until now. Uh, and now this one is from Studio Calico. So I've got from the bottom up Studio Calico Pink Paisley Scraptastic, Scraptastic. Um, that bold black and white striped one is a fancy pants paper. And then that which I'm just putting in right now is like a grid paper. And it has some watercolor on it from a time that I was watercoloring. So it's not it didn't come that way with the green and the blue on it. That's that one that I'm putting down right now. That, that is it. So the watercolor on that is, is from me. I did, I did that for another project quite some time ago, probably like years ago. Uh, okay, so now here I go. I've got all of my layers. I really like how they look and uh, they're, they're not quite bold enough, but I do really like how they look. I've decided to just hit this with a heat gun because I wasn't sure the gold was looking quite shiny and I, I thought it might still be wet, but I don't, I don't think it was because it's still looking shiny when I go to touch it. And if sure enough, it's dry. Yep, it's dry. So now I can start deciding where I'm going to put my layers. So I'm going to start by doodling around the outside edge of this and I have a couple of different paint pens and this Dilutions white paint pen, I really, really love it, but it stops working halfway through this task and I really just don't have the, I'm trying to scribble the word T, T, T all over this and you're not gonna be able to read it, but that's okay. Um, but it stops working and I really don't have the time or the motivation to sort it out. Like you can take the little nib out and probably clean it, run it under warm water Water and then get it flowing again but I just didn't have the patience to do that so I'm going to outline it in black as well I've got a couple of outlines in the white there I'm outlining it in black and then uh, I'm just going to grab my white gel jelly roller because uh, my my jelly pen because it's a very reliable white pen even though it doesn't you know paint on paint just flows so much more nicely so I really love the dilutions one but uh, but the jelly roller did it did an okay job too then I just took my gray Chamel pen and outlined very carefully around that too I didn't want to get uh, paint on it be very very careful when you're using your markers on paint that the paint is dry because it will ruin the nibs of your markers if the paint isn't dry so now I'm just using my pit pen, my Faber-Castell pit pen, to uh, go all the way around the edge of two of my layers here. This white, it's it looks like a plain white paper from this from this height, but it's actually has tiny, tiny little black polka dots in it. And that just gives some definition to those two outermost layers, and it uh, it it kind of gives the gives the bunch of layers a little bit of shape. 
So I'm using my ATG to attach those layers to my background and pull up some of the edges. I stapled the whole thing together a few steps ago and uh, so it's a little bit wobbly because the staple only holds it together to such an extent, but that's okay. I kind of like that it wobbles around a little bit. It helps me not uh, be fully committed to the placement. So now I feel like I've got enough paper on this on this project. So I'm going to move all of that paper and as well as my cat a little bit off to the side. And uh, I know I want to use one of these pineapple puffy stickers that my sister gave me for Christmas. They're from Recollections and I really like them. I'm pulling out a couple of different kinds of chipboard. I have the cute girl chipboard, which I'm pretty sure I'm not going to use. But then I'm going to look through this other chipboard that's just in my stash. And this is basic gray from the Lime Ricky collection way back in the day. This was my very first scrapbooking collection that I ever bought. Uh, the Lime Ricky collection. I have a couple of other basic gray uh, chipboard pieces here that I'm just pulling out from, I think it was called Cupid, that collection. And then those are my my flowers and my butterflies and stars and arrows and I'm just looking through. I'm going to pull out a couple of these butterflies just for the color. I'm thinking I probably don't actually want to put butterflies on this layout but uh, from a color perspective they work. If I do use the butterfly, I might want to put some leaves around it. So I pulled out those Prima leaves that I haven't used yet. And then I pulled out some of the Paige Evans die cuts from her two collections that I had in my stash. And also my red, green, and yellow die cuts. So I'm thinking I might make this arrow kind of go from wherever I put the title to the photo. I, I thought it has a real funky look to it and, and whimsical and playful. So that's why I, I would really love to use it, but I can't quite figure out how to get it in there. Um, those butterflies are just not doing it for me, but these brackets, now they are working. So I like, I like how these brackets are nesting with one another. I like the repetition and I like the colors and how it picks up on the colors from the background. So these die cuts, I picked out this little potted plant for no reason other than that it looks really cute. It's not really thematically going with it, uh, but that's okay. And uh, that little wobbly line underneath that's made from chipboard, it's from, from uh, Basic Gray. I think that looks cute right there. And I'm just pulling out a few die cuts. I think this one is from Dear Lizzie. It says, you make me happy when skies are gray. And these are just my mixed up die cut pieces. I have them sorted by color. So they're from a variety of different manufacturers. I think this is from Dear Lizzie or Amy Tangerine. And I'm not going to use it after all, but uh, pull, pulling out some yellow and just kind of trying to go with some funky designs. That happy in the script words, I think, will look nice on top of the banner. Uh, and I think I'll be able to layer the pineapple with the potted plant behind it because they're similar shapes. And so I think they'll nest nicely together. I moved the green bracket back a layer so that it uh, just kind of disappears nicely between two layers. And I think I will put the happy on top of that green banner and stick the chipboard wobbly line so that it's just peeking out. I'm going to try to layer this you make me happy when skies are gray so that it looks like it's longer than it is so that it kind of disappears in behind the uh, in behind the paper layers but so that you can still make out what it says. Taking off the adhesive backing for the yellow one and the green one already had the adhesive backing removed and uh, sticking the potted plant and the pineapple in place. I like how that looks. I'm gonna stick this little wobbly line in place. And I'm not really following any design principles as I do this one. I want this one to look pretty whimsical and fun and I'm not thinking too much about a visual triangle or anything. I think, you know, with the with the mixed media circle in the background and the uh, text in red that pokes out on two different sides of the of the circle, I think that that provides a nice, I guess, L-shaped structure for me to follow here. And I really want the embellishments to be quite minimal because the there's so much interest on that mixed media background. 
So I did go back to my full size black and white papers and I pulled out that diagonally striped Felicity Jane paper that I love so much I just used another piece of that fairly recently. Uh, but I'm going to take off a, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch all the way around this. The circle was already centered in the middle of the page so I couldn't just take two adjacent sides. Then I'll pull off the, not pull off, I'll cut off the <laughs> manufacturer's trip trim from that uh, Felicity Jane paper and the reason I framed this with the black and white striped paper is that it really gives this page structure that it was otherwise lacking. It seemed like the like the circle was just kind of floating there and the edges just kind of drifted off to nothingness and so the uh, f by matting it in this in this black and white this really bold paper it just helps to frame in the layout and make it seem more like it belongs. Now these are some Tim Holtz rub-ons let me tell you what they're called. They're life quotes and they're called remnant rubs and I bought these specifically for putting on mixed media projects. I thought I would use them instead of using them as intact specific rub-ons. I thought I would use them as a design element. So I am just randomly putting various bits of this. I've I've got the I'm focusing on the words here and but I'm they don't come off all that well onto paint but if you really stick with it, they they will. Uh, and and I'm not taking full words. I'm I'm kind of making them be ripped as they as they come off of the page. And I'm tr kind of trying to make it look random and like they were already there in the background before I put my layers in place. This is the only one that says something specific, and it says that's the one before on, on top of the "You Make Me Happy" die cut. It says stuff I like. And what that does is it just brings some added uh, black elements into the page because there's that black and white border around the outside edges and lots of black in the photo and that black and white striped paper amongst the layers that I just wanted to bring some black into the main part of the layout as well so that it wasn't just around the outside edges. Added a couple of arrows every here and there. And I really like how that looks. I felt like I needed something vertical over here above my layers and so these stacked days of the week I thought would work quite well. So I, uh, I decided to take those. I'm going all the way up to Wednesday but I'm not going to take the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday part. And I'm pulling them off so that they're ripping because I don't want them to look too perfect. The Saturday was a little bit stubborn and didn't want to come off <laughs> the, the sheet but it finally did. And I like how that looks. Oh yes, so I also took some thread and just balled it up and used some glue to stick it in between my layers. And now I'm just doing the same here so that there's thread in two different places. It just adds to the messy look of this page. I didn't feel like sewing. It, I think that this layout would have looked really nice with some sewing on it, but I literally just didn't feel like it, so I didn't do it. Um, now I'm going to layer that uh, banner with the word happy. And what I did just there, I didn't... Um, there I go, layering those two things together, the banner and the word happy. I uh, used my stapler to staple that wavy line in place. And now I'm just adding a couple more staples to the background, just again for a bit more of a messy look in two different places. And... I'm really liking how it looks. I think it looks great. There are a few things that I did that I added after the camera wasn't rolling and I'll talk about those after I do the title. So these letter stickers are called Subway and I bought them at Crop and Create a couple of years ago and I absolutely love them. As I start to spell out this title, I wasn't entirely sure what it would be, but I knew it would include tea. And then as I spelt out tea, I thought I'd do it. I'd make it called tea-licious, <laughs> which is, of course, a little pun on the word delicious. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to spell out that word and then take a little bit of the Z to use as the, the little hyphen between tea and licious. I thought about maybe spreading them out like having them on two different lines but I'm going to spread them across the top of my layers here so that they so that the title just extends 
across all of the layers of paper underneath of the photo. As I'm putting down the letters, I'm doing so in a pretty random way so that they're not particularly lined up. I want some of the letters to be a little bit askew just so that it has a nice casual look to it. Just to match with the rest of the layout, which is quite uh, loose and not too formal. I'll read my journaling, which I'm putting around the outside of the circle. It says, I've never been much of a tea drinker, but wow, this me to wee tea from David's Tea is so refreshingly delish. And I used a pretty large, messy handwriting as I did it. It's my own handwriting. I just made sure to do it a little bit bigger than usual and just a little bit messier than usual, which is already my, my handwriting is pretty messy anyways. And then I'm just going to attach the entire layout to the background piece of paper, which to me is just the finishing touch. It really finishes off this page and makes it look so pretty. I love it. Thank you so much for watching this extended process video. I hope you guys hung in there. It's, I'm at the 41 minute mark at this point. But look at the detail. Oh, I love this one. It was so much fun to do. So uh, what I did when the camera wasn't rolling was I decided that, see the word happy there? It kind of disappears. It's, it's much less bold than the banner that it is on top of. So you'll see in a, just a second when it flips over to the still shots of this, you'll see that I actually outlined the word happy with a fine felt tip marker. And uh, it looks quite a bit like it just it gives it a little bit more emphasis and keeps it from, from disappearing quite as much uh, on top of that really bold banner. Oh, there's a photo of it without the, <laughs> without the outlining. These uh, photos might be a little bit of a mixture between the before and the after I changed the, uh, the word happy. So thanks so much for watching and have a really great scrappy week.